In this video, we're going to take a look at assembling the Stilt FS280, also identical as the Stilt FS160, FS220, and FS290. The assembly consists of installing a new piston with rings and its wrist pin with retainer clips. Before starting the assembly, we want to take a look at the framework of the machine, making sure we have an understanding of the frame and all its part for assembly. Before the assembly can begin, the internal and the complete framework of the stilt must be clean, preferably with a purple blaster solution. So you can use this in a full concentrate or you can mix it 50-50 with water for cleaning out the internals where the crankshaft is, the fan blades, and all around the frame. Then the machine will be placed the frame of the machine, like you see here, will be placed in the sunlight for a few hours so that water can evaporate and dry the frame and its eternal during the process of the assembly. It is highly recommended that you use the stilt oil for lubricating all the parts that's going to be assembled inside the engine. That includes the piston the wrist pin down inside the crankshaft where you have two ball bearings, one in the front, one in the rear. So you do not want to excessively use the stilt oil for lubricating. You just want to lightly coat it. This is going to help the engine reduce friction and wear when it is initially start up for the first time. Also as a part of the assembly is the gasket for seating the cylinder head on top of the framework for the stilt machine. Now you have the factory stilt gasket. In the event you cannot get this gasket, you might have to make one like we did here. And most of the time it's going to be paper. So you want to spray paint it, making it oil proof and oil resistance so the oil will not leak or sweat from the gasket joint. Now another important part to this gasket is you want to make sure the thickness remains the same as the factory gasket because any difference in the thickness of the gasket will affect the compression ratio of the engine when it's in operating. So by using a much thinner gasket, you're able to increase the compression ratio. Using a thicker gasket, you will lose on the compression ratio. Now, if you lose on the compression ratio, it means less power. If you use a thinner gasket or no gasket with a sealer, you are going to increase the compression ratio, and this is going to also increase the power output of the engine. Please make sure you take note of that. It is very important. Also take note that if you do not use a gasket and use a preferable sealer, in some case, the piston might get caught up at the top of the cylinder when the engine gets hot. So it's always best to use the gasket that the manufacturer provide and sell for replacement. Fitting the piston into the cylinder is going to become the most difficult part since the piston ring has to maintain a fixed position so you will want the lower ring to be where this dowel pin is. The reason that pin is placed in that location and the gap of the piston must meet that location when it's fitted inside the cylinder is so that the piston does not, the piston ring does not walk during the process of the engine operating. Another thing is if the ring should be placed in a different location that is recommended 
where the dowel pin is, the gap of the piston to be placed where the dowel pin is, the piston will most likely become stuck in that area when it becomes hot. So when we take a look, we can see we have a dowel pin here for the bottom ring and we have a dowel pin up here for the upper ring. So it is very important that those two location and the ring gap is maintained when installing it inside of the cylinder or the cylinder head. Now when we take a look at inside of the cylinder head, you can see we went in there with a 200 grit sandpaper on the power wheel and clean up inside the power, inside the combustion chamber. This is going to reduce the likeliness for carbon to build up in there, like I said before. So we have a picture here you could look at to see what in here looks like before it was detailed. Now you also want to do the same thing at the ports. You just want to smooth it, get all the grit out of the surface because the grit is what's going to hold carbon and oil sludge causing a blockage later on as the engine endure. So that is very important to consider when assembling the piston into the cylinder. There is also a needle roller bearing that is required installation on the connecting rod when the piston is to be installed with its wrist pin and the retainer clips. Another important part to the engine assembly is that you want to make sure you pour some of that stilt oil in a container for saturating the part that is to be assembled. Now we're going to place the needle roller bearing into the connecting rod. So when you take a look at the connecting rod, you're going to notice at the top it's darker than the rest of the rod. Reason being is that the top of the connecting rod is heat treated for increasing the strength when it is extreme horsepower applied to it or RPM, it does not become broken or fractured. So you will continue to lubricate the assembly with oil and also the piston. You want to make sure you get the rings saturated in the groove. Another part is to the assembly is that you want to make sure the crankshaft balancer is at the bottom so the connecting rod is at its highest point when the crankshaft is rotating. This is going to give you room for installing the cylinder onto the piston when getting ready to bolt that cylinder head to the framework. So we're going to need to place the object in the fan here and over here for preventing the flywheel from turning. So careful attention must be taken when installing these rubber hose into the fan blade on the flywheel bracing against the frame so the piston does not move the connecting rod and the crankshaft when it's being installed. During the process of the assembly, if you choose to use these latex gloves that I'm using, you have to be careful that piece of it don't break off and become stuck up in the assembly. Now we're going to get ready to install the piston. And we want to set the ring, like we said, where the dowel pin is. So the piston will be installed like this, where the two dowel pin is facing the intake side. That will be this side. So this piston will be going on like this. 
and then we have to get the wrist pin into it. So it's easy to install this wrist pin since it's brand new and the piston is brand new. So what we want to do first is we want to install one of the retainer clip for holding the wrist pin or the piston pin in its location. Let's get a closer look at installing this pin. So what we want to do is we want to position it in a way where we could just pop one side in from this groove right here. I'm going to place this tool right here to pop it in. But before we could do so, we want to make sure we hold this end inside where it's going to be fitted. So this is going to be a little challenging. So you need to check to make sure that this retainer clip is perfectly seated. Once you get it in there, you could push the pin over for seating it in. Or you could simply use the tool for walking it into position. So now we have the C-clip retainer for the wrist pin in location. So you must carefully take a look at the C-clip for holding the wrist pin. Make sure it's sitting in its groove all around perfectly before the piston and the pin can be installed. So like I said, we're going to install the two dowel pin side for the intake. Just want to place the piston over the connecting rod. Want to place that piston on top of the connecting rod, making sure where the two dowel pin or the gap, the piston ring gap, facing towards the intake. Now we want to seat this all the way back so it's fitted against the C-clip that holds the wrist pin on the other side. Now we have another C-clip here for installing on this side. So this is going to have to get placed where you're going to be able to use the tool placing one end of the C-clip inside its channel and using the tool in the piston groove or popping the clip into its location and checking it make sure that it's in the groove because if it fails to fit in the groove What's going to happen is when the engine starts to run, it could pop out of there, and then the pin could start walking out, striking against the cylinder wall, destroying the engine, piston, cylinder wall, cylinder head, and this will have to get redone again. So we have secured a pin in location. You could test it by using your tool for pushing on the piston pin on both sides, making sure that it does not pop out. So we have successfully installed the piston onto the connecting rod. Now it's time for us to clamp the piston ring down where the gap is at the dowel and install the cylinder 
into the piston with its ring maintaining that position. So this is something you're going to have to do with the tool by pushing on the end of the ring like we have done here with the C-clip and walking it around so it could fit into the cylinder. Before the cylinder head can be installed, we first want to take some of the still lubricating oil, applying it inside the cylinder wall, lubricating its surface. So when the piston is fully fitted into the bottom here, it will be able to slide into the cylinder with ease. Before fitting the cylinder head onto the piston, always want to make sure you do not forget installation of the gasket. Also important to make sure the surface where the gasket is to be fitted is oil free. There is no oil there. Now let's take a look at installing the piston into the cylinder. Installation of the cylinder head is going to be going like this. This is the intake, this is the exhaust, this is the front. So what we want to do is we want to place the flat side of the piston and the ring into the cylinder. And we're going to take our tool and work the ring into position all around. So that's the first ring already in and you can see the gap of the ring is exactly where the dowel pin is. So we're going to have to try that again. So that's the top ring already in. Now we have to come on this side to see the second ring fit in position. So on this side we want to do the same thing. We want to get the flat side of the ring. Against the cylinder. Now this is going to be the difficult side for positioning, so preferably you want to get the bottom first. And that's the two ring fitted into the cylinder that we could bring this up. Once the cylinder or the piston is installed into the cylinder you could check the ring gap with the dowel pin by looking at it through the port. So that's the top one. You're going to need to rotate and check the bottom one. So that's how you'll know you have the rings perfectly seated.
The four bolts will require alignment with the gasket and where the cylinder is going to be seated before the cylinder can be pushed down into position. Careful attention must be taken that the bolt does not become cross-treaded when it's installed. Now we have all four bolts in position. We can push down on the cylinder and tighten the four bolts. So when tightening the four bolts, you're going to want to do this one first, then you come to this one, and this one, and this one on the top. Now you will tighten the bolt first. You just want to snug them. You don't want to torque the bolts, or I should say the Torx screw. You just want to snug it like that. At this point, you could remove the rubber stopper for the flywheel. Now you just want to make sure you do this in a X or a cross section. This way the cylinder head is perfectly torqued to the machine and it's square, flat, in position. On some of these machines, you will be able to use the tool going down through these holes to gain access to the bolt. But on some of them you may not be able to do so, so it may require drilling out the channel where the bolt goes down or accessing Now you just want to repeat this sequence of torquing the bolts, just snugging it little by little until it cannot be tightened anymore. So it's nearly impossible to get a torque wrench on here because you will not be able to get a socket and an extension to attach your torque wrench. So you just want to tighten it, you don't want to over strength tighten it until you just can't turn it anymore with the factory tool. So the factory tool has enough leverage for tightening the bolt and not over torquing it or stripping the threads. So this has complete the most difficult and important part in assembling the engine. Now you're going to need a cloth always for wiping your hands with the oil and also cleaning up any excess oil that remain on the outside. Now it's time for us to install the muffler, the carburetor, which is fitted to the fuel tank. So you're going to be assembling the carburetor perfectly back into the fuel tank and its assembly, and then you will just plug that on to here. So let's take a look at that. Before completing the assembly, putting on the fuel tank and the gas tank, you just want to turn on the flywheel, and in doing so, you're going to hear the compression. So you could hear that. So once you have this smooth rotation, it means everything is perfectly assembled. Here I have the assembly. This is the fuel tank where the carburetor is going to be bolted. So you see this is the part 
that will have to get fit onto the engine here. So it will be going like this. So you don't want to mess around with this, trying to have this in location and then trying to fit this. At the same time, you just want to take this off, complete your fitting of the cylinder head onto the piston. Now, I highly do not recommend that you disconnect this fuel line because it could become damaged and that could set you back. So what we want to do is we want to fit the carburetor back in position. You also want to get this garment here in location on the idle screw on the fuel setting screw. So this is a rubber and what you will most likely do is you will slide this out, place this in location and then we will be able to slide that in so it fits perfectly. So this is to protect air from coming in here and keeping the compartment sealed. So we have two screws, nuts for the carburetor. So these two nut are eight millimeter. You will tighten them down, snug it down, so the carburetor seal against the garment like this. Now we're gonna place this clamp where it was before, like that. So this here is at a five o'clock position, and then we're gonna place some lubricating oil on the garment so it can be easily slide on to the engine intake port. So this, you have to remember these two bolts, they're long bolts that's going to be fitting the tank to the bottom. This part here, this wire that goes to the igniter, the pickup for the flywheel will have to be passed through in this location before this part can be installed. Now you have to take careful attention to this hose and its plastic fitting because it, be, it could become broken right here during the process of trying to fit it. So that is something you're gonna have to consider. Now, That's it. So the garment is on. It's going to need to get fit a little more. So you're going to have to take a little screwdriver and try to walk it around so it can be perfectly seat around where it needs to be. So you can see how it is right now. It's not really that good. Placing that garment in location, it's going to be somewhat a little difficult than trying to use the screwdriver because you could most likely puncture a hole in the rubber garment so you have to be careful with that. Also that clamp will need to be open to its maximum diameter because the garment is going to need to expand to go over that intake spout so it could fit perfectly like that. You do not want to see the lip. So you want just everything to be covered with the duct. Very important this part here. And you're going to find it a little difficult from the way of putting this side on to the engine completely with the carburetor. It comes time for installing the three bolts on the hardware in the carburetor compartment. This one here with the small washer will go right here to hold the blue wire down. The one with the big washer right here will 
hold this piece for the accelerator cable adjustment and this bolt will go behind where the garment is for the idle control and air control screw. So now we have to fit this cable back onto the linkage. So these two nuts are going to need to be removed. The carburetor is going to have to get slide forward and then the end of the coax cable can be installed onto the linkage, placing back the carburetor with its garment and reinstalling the screw, the adjustment for the accelerator. I'm going to show you the adjustment on the accelerator using the screw with the large washer. That's going to be a replacement. So you're going to have to Get that in there, snug it with the tool for now. Now on the linkage where you're going to be making that adjustment, there is a fat side and a skinny side. The fat side will have to be down so the stopper could seat itself into it while the cable comes out from the fine side. You're going to be able to figure it out once you see it. Now we have this here we have to get to remove to place the cable to the rear. So we just want to use this tilt screwdriver for removing the little screw. This little screw has a washer on it. So this is the part that holds the sleeve of the cable in position. I want to make sure that seats properly. Have to be careful here because this is all plastic. I want to make sure it's seated properly when placing it. So that silver part has to sit in the middle of the channel. And it should stay in position like that, allowing you for placing the screw. With the cable in location, again, you need to slide this forward and just fit this protector duct, place it back in location, and we could place the nut on here. And torque it down to position. This side here, we're going to use the screw with the medium side washer for holding the assembly for the gas tank carburetor against the frame and this wire is going to ground the igniter to the frame now we're going to have to take this off again slide this forward so we can get this screw on the back. So we have to take this out. I'm going to get this screw in here. So this will be hand snug. So you're going to see there's a channel up here on the bottom. You're going to have to properly fit the carburetor. 
want to make sure it seats. time for filling the air filter. So we have this screen, then we have this element which should all be cleaned up. It can be cleaned with a purple blaster before installing and then you place it in the sun to dry. But that could be done later. Right now we just want to assemble the carburetor section. So you want to make sure you seat this cover in position then using your tool for tightening the screws now when you look in there you also saw next to the blue wire there's a black wire well there's two black wires that go together one has a gold connector and the other one has a silver. You're going to be able to see that. It's not that difficult. It's only three wires. The blue go by itself and the two black one goes together. So this completes the air filter and the carburetor installation. It's time for installing the muffler. We have these two bolts that goes here and these two. One goes down here, one goes here. Um, I like to use an aluminum foil gasket for sealing the muffler against the exhaust port. In the video description you're going to see a video link on how to modify this muffler for reducing carbon buildup inside of the engine and also making the combustion chamber operate cooler. You could go to that video link to see how to modify the muffler. It is very beneficial. Most of the time you have a spark arrestor in here with some fine holes and what's going to happen is when the carbon from the engine exhausts itself into the muffler it will build up in those fine holes and then it will clog it and this will prevent the engine from starting because it's not able to exhaust itself. Another thing is during the process of the carbon building up on the spark arrestor you're going to find out that inside the engine is also developing a large amount of sludge and carbon that is unnecessary. So let's install the muffler, the spark plug, place the wire on. We have to install this crankcase positive ventilation or a positive crankcase ventilation tube. This is a breeder, so I've explained previously what this is for. You want to make sure this hose and the port is clear. Then we're going to put on the pull start to the rear of the machine. When replacing the pull start, I want you to take a look at this. See that little black plastic that extends itself when it hooks into the channel for spinning the engine. Now when starting the engine, you're going to be able to pull this as fast as you can to start it. Once the engine gets hot, it's not so smart to pull this cable like you would when the engine is cold because you could break that black plastic. What happens is when the engine is hot, it will have more compression. So what you have to do is you pull it slowly till you feel a hard spot in the engine where it's like very hard to turn. Once you feel that hard spot, you release the cable and then you pull start it. So you don't want to pull start it and then you're going to have a hard spot here and continue to pull. It's most likely going to break this plastic. 
you have to look out for that. In the back here, a filter can be placed, not for restricting the air, you want something that's, that has you, that you could see through, for capturing the dust, if you feel to do so, I will show you that in another time. So what we want to do is we just want to place this on here, and we have the four screws. So these four screws will be just snug, don't really want to tighten down too hard on it. Once you get it snug, you're just going to give it a little more. And then you're going to go back around to check them to make sure they're all evenly torqued or tightened, secured. Time, you just want to pull it. You want to get that compression, that beat when you're pulling this. We need to accomplish a few last things before we can start the engine. The first one is the spark plug. So we're going to reuse the old spark plug to burn off on breaking the engine. But what needs to be done is you need to take a sandpaper and just want to pass it through between the two electrodes, cleaning in between the gap. A new spark plug will be replaced, the old one. Now installation of the spark plug, you just want to slug it down by hand with the tool and you give it a little more pull like that, probably a 10 degree, 15 degree, and that should be sufficient. I want to replace this spark plug wire. It's best to place some dielectric grease inside where the contact has to connect to the electrode. Now, when you press this down, you should hear it click onto the electrode. Now we could place the cover. This is very important. In the video description, there is a link to show you how to start the engine and set the fuel trim for the carburetor. Starting the engine for the first time is going to require adjustment to the idle screw, the fuel trim screw, and making sure the throttle cable adjustment is adjusted properly. So as you can see when we start the engine, you notice a lot of smoke coming out of the tailpipe as the oil burning off so the engine could get put to run supreme once the fuel idle is adjusted. Starting the engine is going to be a little difficult in the beginning after the rebuild because remember you have oil and you still have to reset the fuel trim but once the engine is get running this is what you want when you place the machine on the bench it should not rattle and dance all over the place it should be able to maintain a smooth running and stay one place while it's idling so figure it